Hi everyone, Matt Collins here. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about bait size, specifically boilie size. Now for me, the choice of bait size has got nothing to do with the size of carp that I'm fishing for. I've caught 40s on little 15 millers and I've caught singles and doubles on 24 millers. Carp size is irrelevant when it comes to bait size, but there are different factors to consider when choosing bait size. And that's what this video is all about. So I'm gonna start with small baits. Now, what do I mean by small baits? For me, small baits are any bait in the 10 to 15 mil range. One of the big advantages with 15 millers if I pick up a handful like that, you can see how many individual bait items we've got in that. It's easily a hundred bait. If we take the same double handful of 20 mil baits and lay those out, you can see that we've got a lot less baits, probably about 50 baits. If I just take a little handful of bait and dot some around the tray here, we'll see that it's quite easy to create a nice spread of baits. I didn't even need a full handful of baits there. So we've got a nice little spread of baits there. What this means is that we can force the carp to move from bait to bait to bait using a very small quantity of bait. It saves you money and it makes the bait work harder for you. If there weren't any other factors to take into consideration, then using small baits is a great idea. Unfortunately, they aren't always the perfect solution. An important consideration when selecting bait sizes are what size of materials are you going to be working with? So I've got a selection of materials here that I've used over the years and I'll start with the biggest one. This is Sunset Amnesia in 30 pounds. It's about 0.57 and it's a material I use a lot when river carping. The problem with a material like this is if I were to do an overhand knot in it, the knot is massive. And then if I was to try and fit a 15 mil bait onto that, the bait would just explode. So I cannot use something like this heavy duty mono with a small bait and a knotless knot. Other materials that are going to cause you problems with a knotless knot configuration are the fluorocarbons. So this is Corder IQ in 20 pounds and this material is about 0.47. Again, quite a big knot and you run a high risk of exploding a 15 mil bait. Let's get on to some materials that definitely work with 15 mil bait. So this year I've been using a lot of the Nash Bullet in 0.40. This is the 20 pound version. I have split one or two baits with the 0.40 mono, but it only tends to be when the bait was actually damaged in the first place. So I think 0.40 is about the limit for knotless knot mounting of a 15 mil bait. So Nash Skin Link does work, but you'd have to strip the coating off. If you wanted to fish this coating all the way through, you couldn't use a 15 mil bait with this material. Same goes for lightweight materials like the Corder End Trap, 20 pounds. If you strip it back, no problem, but if you left it with the coating on, then you definitely have problems. Moving on to a couple of my favorite braids, we've got the 25 pound Chryston here, Supernova, and it's nice, fine stuff, no problem for using with small baits. This is Nash's Armour Link in 35 pound, and 35 pound is the absolute upper limit for use with a 15 mil bait. So you need to factor in what materials and what rigs you're gonna use with the bait size as well. It's no good just deciding I wanna use 15 mils and then deciding to use a rig material that's way too heavy. It's just not gonna work. One big advantage when fishing at range is that small baits have very low air resistance. That means for the same amount of force of cast and the same size of lead, 
a little 15 miller is going to fly further than an 18 or a 20. So if you really need to bang one out hard, then a 15 miller or even smaller is definitely a good option. Another consideration when it comes to bait size is what sort of bait you're going to use. This is a little 15 mil bottom bait straight out of the bag. Commercially made bottom baits are made with slightly different mixes than pop-ups and wafters. What I've found especially with small bottom baits is that a bottom bait out of the bag is far easier to split open by accident than something like a pop-up or a wafter. These are much more robust and if you're running into limits with material just because of how you want to fish then I'd definitely look to something like a pop-up or a wafter to get over this problem. It would enable you to use a smaller bait with a more robust material. What this means is if you wanted to fish with something like 35 pound skin link or maybe 25 pound skin link without any of the coating stripped back, if you use a wafter, the chance of that bait splitting open when you pierce it with a needle is much reduced. Another trick that you can use in order to eliminate this problem with rigs, materials versus bait size is to change the way you mount the bait. This little mono rig, for example, that I came up with last year, because there's no knot inside of the bait, it's just a cut and blob technique, it means that there's very little stress on the boilie, so there's very little chance of opening it up. This means that this rig is perfectly suited for fishing with small baits. One of the big downsides of small baits are nuisance species. That species that we don't want to catch when we're carp fishing. Just about every water I've ever fished has got bream in, but you can also have problems on waters that contain massive roach or big rud, or on some waters, the dreaded poisson chat, which can literally destroy your bait in minutes. Apart from accidental captures of big roach and big bream on little 15 mil baits, the other thing to watch for is whittling. At certain times of year here the roach can become ferociously active and if your bait is not hard enough and large enough it will get whittled down and by the time you wind in in the morning they almost come back in the shape of a pyramid. If you're getting accidental captures of unwanted species on small baits then the only way is to go with bigger baits. If you've got problems with whittling, you can either just go bigger baits or you can also go harder baits. Small baits are ideally suited to small waters. If you're only fishing 20 or 30 yards out, then you're within easy catapult range. There's nothing more convenient for baiting up with little baits, little pouch full of 15 millers, get them out there, and very quick way of getting a nice bit of attraction around your rig. Other ways I apply small baits, throwing stick, this little short one, perfect up to about 40, 45 yards, something like that. For absolute maximum distance, I've got a 20 millimeter long range carbon stick, and I can get these little 15 millers out 60, 70 yards very comfortably. The other consideration when using small baits is needle size. Now if you watched a few of my videos you'll probably see I always use this uh, Gardner XL braided needle. People are always asking me what needle is that so very very useful tool actually I use that an awful lot but it doesn't mean I don't have other tools for smaller baits. If you're using a range of baits I would definitely carry a range of needles. It's no good trying to drive a lightweight fine needle through a hardened 24 mil bait. And conversely, it's no good trying to put a heavy duty needle through a tiny little 10 mil or 12 mil. It's just going to break it apart. 
So that one's quite fine and very strong. I use that for piercing very firm baits. That's a little splicing needle, but I have used that for things like sweet corn. That's a little splicing needle that can be used for small baits as well. That's a regular size gated latch needle. That'll work well with 20 mil baits up to 24 mil baits. If you've never used anything smaller than 18 miller, then I definitely advocate using 15 mil baits. You could save a bit of money because you can create an effective baiting scenario with less bait and they could be worth that extra bite. Let's have a chat about hook sizes with regards to bait sizes. I get loads of questions through on what size hook to use for what size bait. And going back 10, 15 years ago, yes, for one size of bait, I'd change the hook size, etc. But to be honest, nowadays, I just don't bother. For me, if we're talking about somewhere between a 15 mil bait and a 24 mil bait, I think that a size six hook can cover all of those different sizes of bait. I've just dug out my collection of all the different sizes and styles and patterns of hook, hooks that I've collected over the years. The thing is with all these different types of hook and manufacturers of hook is that one size six is basically a different size for every other manufacturer. There's very little consistency. A size four in one pattern might be the same size as a size six or a size two. It's very, very difficult when you get into the sport to apply you know, these rules, a size six will do everything because every hook is different. As time goes on, what I'm looking to achieve in my fishing is to keep it simple. So this year I decided just to fish with a size six hook. I've got a couple of different patterns. I've got some shod twisters and some shod claws. And I'm going to do all my fishing with these two hooks. They might both say size six on the packet, but actually the shod claws have got a much wider gape than the shod twister. The shod claw is also a slightly thicker gauge. By limiting my choice, I can carry fewer hooks. I've got fewer decisions to make and it's just simpler. I've just knocked up a very basic hair rig here with a bit of armor link and that's a that's a 24 mil bottom bait that's the shod claw and a size six and you can see that's a really nice combination here's a little 15 mil with a size six twister and it it works it's a great little rig it's not unbalanced at all so i just don't think you need to worry about having loads of different sizes of hooks for different sizes of bait i certainly don't bother so I've racked up some very common bait sizes here. We've got 15 mils, 18s, 20s, 22s and 24. Most of you will be very familiar with fishing the 15s and 18s I expect. Some of you the, the 20s but 22 and 24 mil baits might seem absolutely massive to you. I was chatting to a fellow fishery owner earlier in the year and uh, about bait sizes and what what bait sizes they were going to stock etc and uh, really interesting to hear that uh, a lot of their customers are used to bring in you know 12 and 15 mil baits and they had zero confidence that you could catch on anything other than small baits i really don't get that carp have massive mouths i've caught mid doubles on the river on double 24 mil baits and the fish that we've got here double 24s were going sideways. Personally, I don't understand this lack of confidence with bigger baits. I know that they look shockingly large compared to a little 15 millimeter bait, but they work and they work great. So we went through the pros and cons of 15 mil baits. Let's have a chat about why to use big baits. What advantages do they offer us? When I'm out on the public waters, the large lakes and rivers of France, we get problems with bream and poisson chat, and it can really mess up the carp fishing. I wouldn't dream of taking on these venues with little 15 mil or 18 mil baits. I'd just get annihilated by these other species. 
I see plenty of chat on Facebook, anglers complaining, oh, I only caught a load of bream last night or whatever. And the solution is, is there, it's simple. Use a really big bait. If that doesn't work, use two really big baits. It's a very, very selective method and one I use all the time in my public water fishing. I think it comes down to confidence at the end of the day. If all your carp fishing has been based around using little baits like 15 mils and 18 mils, then it's difficult to believe that you can catch a carp on a larger bait. But this is where you have to take a leap of faith. You can, trust me, you absolutely can. The other advantage with using big baits is that they're far easier to get out of range, especially when you need to use a catapult or preferably, of course, a throwing stick. If you've never tried to fire a 24 mil out of a catapult, you'd be amazed at the range that you can get on this thing. My preferred technique for putting baits out at range when I want to dot individual boilers around with the swim is to use a, use a throwing stick. Uh, this is my 20 mil version. I've got a 25 mil and a 30 mil as well. It enables me to put big baits like this 24 mil are out a very long way indeed. If you're fishing a water with 18 mil baits and you want to put bait out further, then I definitely advocate up in the bait size and maybe treating yourself to a larger diameter stick in order to do the job. You'll be able to get more bait out quicker and further. One of the advantages that I mentioned earlier about small baits is that mounted on a simple rig like this, it's easier to cast them a very long way indeed. Now, while it might be easier to put larger baits out of range with a throwing stick, actually casting a big 24 mil bait like this will actually require more force and not travel as far as a little 15 mil bait. For me, that's the only disadvantage for using a large size bait. One way around this, of course, is to bait up with big 24 mil baits and then go for a smaller pop-up cast out in amongst the larger baits. It's easier to cast out a small pop-up and they're just as effective when fished over a range of larger baits. Now something that's quite popular to do is to mix bait sizes. That's to say to put 12 millers, 18 mils and even 24 mils together in a mix. To be honest, that's not something I bother to do. Once I've opened a bag of bait, I'd much rather just use that bait. I don't really want to have two open bags on the go. It's not that it's going to go off, it's just personal preference. If mixing bait sizes gives you the confidence you need, then great, go for it. It's just something that I don't tend to bother with. Well, there we go, guys. That's my thought on bait sizes and hook sizes. I hope that you found that useful. There are no hard and fast rules. It's all personal preference at the end of the day. I don't really get terribly hung up on it. I just try and use the right bait size for the right situation. What really matters is that you're using good bait to start with and that your hooks are razor sharp. As always, if you've got any comments or questions or if you want to tell me about your thoughts on bait sizes, then do leave a comment. I do try and respond to them all. Until next time.